Most people call me Liz or Lizzie, although my name is Elizabeth. Some even call me Betty, but I've never liked that. Mom, Dad, and my older sister, Kate, made up what you would consider an average family when I was growing up. Kate is seven years my senior, and wow, that really made a difference. Our home has been a temple to Kate's existence since I can remember. Her first grin, her first steps, or her scrawled drawings, which mom and dad cherished like Picasso's, were shown on every wall. Me, I was only present. You know, I grew used to it. Playing with Kate's old toys and wearing her hand-me-downs, I didn't know any better, but it wasn't terrific. I simply learned to be silent and not to raise a fuss. The pattern persisted over the years. I gave Kate her old clothing, and she got new ones. I received the things she had outgrown, and she got the newest. However, I never voiced any complaints. I simply was. High school came and went. By that time, Kate had already left home and was attending college on a scholarship. I had hoped that my parents would take more notice of me now, but they were preoccupied with Kate's college experiences, her new boyfriend, and her future. The major announcement followed. One Sunday afternoon, Kate came bursting into the home, beaming and excited. She exclaimed, Mom, Dad, I'm getting married. It would seem as though she had just declared that she had cured cancer or something. Dad began yelling and whooping, and Mom started crying. Me. I pondered whether anyone had recalled my presence in the room while I sat there. Kate's eyes gleamed as she faced me. Lizzie, you'll be my bridesmaid, right? I forced a grin as I nodded. Sure, Kate, congratulations. I crept out of the room as they all hugged, sobbed, and laughed. They never did, and nobody noticed. The magnitude of Kate's wedding exceeded everyone's expectations. I heard my parents conversing quietly in the kitchen one evening. Dad added, we'll have to take out a loan, in a stressed tone. I know, Mom moaned, but it's Kate's big day. We must not disappoint her. A knot started to grow in my gut. In order to pay for Kate's wedding, they were incurring debt. Though I knew better, I wanted to say something to emphasize how absurd this was. It didn't really matter what I thought in this house. The wedding was an extravagant event. Our parents smiled proudly at Kate's princess-like appearance. As usual, I felt invisible as I stood there in my bridesmaid dress. Following the honeymoon, Kate revealed yet another shocking revelation. She said, I've decided to be a housewife at Sunday supper. Jack makes enough for both of us. Dad and Mom looked at each other. Despite their forced grins, I could see the fear in their eyes. The mother remarked, that's wonderful, sweetheart, if that's what makes you happy. I felt like screaming. She wasn't even going to work now that they had taken out a loan for her wedding. However, I remained silent and pushed my food around my plate. Kate soon became pregnant, and she had twins, no less. Our folks went completely crazy. Twins. Dad said repeatedly, shaking his head in amazement. Can you believe it? I was able to believe it. I also couldn't believe what happened next. One evening, Mom said, we ought to assist them in purchasing a home. They'll need the space with two babies on the way. Dad gave a nod. We may contribute to a home down payment. That pleasant location is not far away. I was unable to remain silent any longer. Are you serious? I spoke without thinking. You're already in debt from the wedding, and now you want to buy them a house. Both of them gave me a look as if they had forgotten I was there. Perhaps they had. Mom said, Elizabeth, in a firm tone. This is the role of family. We support one another. A few months later, the twins, two adorable little boys, were born. Mom and Dad were ecstatic, swooning over the infants at Kate's new home whenever they had free time. 
I was attempting to determine my future course of action as I was completing high school. The obvious decision was to go to college, but how would I pay for it? I plucked up the nerve to inquire one evening. Mom, Dad, I've been looking at colleges. Mom responded, that's nice, dear, without raising her gaze from the twins' picture album she was organizing. I was wondering, could you help me with tuition? That glance that stated they'd rather be talking about anything else was shared between them once more. Well, sweetie, Dad said, we'd love to help, but with the loan for Kate's wedding and helping with the house, we can cover half. In response, Mom said, but you'll need to figure out the rest on your own. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. Half? That's all they could do after everything they'd done for Kate. But I knew arguing was pointless. Okay, I said, my voice small. Thanks. As I walked back to my room, I heard them resume their conversation about the twins' latest accomplishments. I closed my door, leaned against it, and for the first time in years, I let myself cry. I'd managed to get into the local community college, not my dream school, but the only one I could afford. With my parents' measly contribution, to make up the difference, I landed a part-time job at a nearby diner. Let me tell you, waiting tables while trying to keep up with college coursework is no picnic. I dragged myself home most nights, dead on my feet, dreaming of my bed. But even that small comfort was often yanked away from me. It started one Friday evening. I had just finished a brutal shift and was looking forward to face planting into my pillow when I walked in to find Kate in our living room, the twins crawling around her feet. Of Lizzie, she exclaimed, thank God you're here. I'm at my wit's end with these two. Mind watching them for a bit. Jack and I haven't had a date night in ages. Before I could even open my mouth, she was out the door, leaving me with two screaming three-year-olds. What the hell? I muttered, staring at my nephews. Don't get me wrong, I love the little terrors, but this wasn't what I signed up for. Mom wandered in from the kitchen. Your sister is exhausted. This is what family does. Besides, it'll be good practice for when you have your own kids. I wanted to scream. Kids. I was barely keeping my head above water as it was. This became a regular occurrence. Every weekend, without fail, Kate would show up, drop off the twins, and disappear. Sometimes she claimed she had errands. Other times, she and Jack would go catch a movie or grab dinner. Every time, I'd end up playing babysitter. One Saturday, after a particularly hellish week of exams, I'd had enough. Kate had just breezed out the door, leaving the twins mid-tantrum. Mom, Dad, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. This isn't fair. I'm exhausted. I work, I study, and now I'm expected to give up my weekends, too. Dad barely looked up from his newspaper. Lizzie, your sister needs the help. You should be glad to do it. But what about what I need? I protested. I'm running myself right here. Mom sighed. Elizabeth, don't be selfish. Kate has two children to look after. You don't know how hard that is. I gave up. It was clear they weren't going to listen, so I resigned myself to my fate. Classes during the week, work in the evenings, and unpaid babysitting on the weekends. Personal life. Huh, that was a joke. The closest thing I had to a social life was making small talk with customers at the diner. Dates. Forget about it. Between work, study, and the twins, I barely had time to shower, let alone meet someone. I was at my breaking point. The constant juggle of work, school, and forced babysitting had left me drained both physically and mentally. I needed a break, a real one, away from everything and everyone. So I made a decision. Mom, Dad, I announced one evening, I'm taking a few days off. I'm going to the beach. Their reaction surprised me. For once, they actually seemed happy for me. 
That's wonderful, Lizzie, Mom exclaimed. Where are you going? I told them about the cheap motel I'd found online, right by the ocean. Nothing fancy, but it was all I could afford. Dad nodded approvingly. Good for you, kiddo. You deserve a break. I almost fell over from shock. Was this really happening? Were they actually acknowledging my needs for once? The day finally came. I packed my bag, hopped on a bus, and felt the weight lifting off my shoulders with every mile that passed. When I finally arrived at the coast, I couldn't believe my luck. The motel was small and a bit run down, but the ocean view was spectacular. I dropped my bag in the room and headed straight for the beach. The salty air filled my lungs, and for the first time in months, I felt like I could breathe. I treated myself to lunch at a cute little seaside cafe, savoring every bite. No screaming kids, no homework, no customers to please, just me, my thoughts, and the sound of the waves. As the sun started to set, I headed back to the motel, already planning my evening of peaceful solitude. But as I approached my room, I heard familiar voices. Surprise, Lizzie. I froze. There standing outside the room next to mine were Mom and Kate, with the twins running circles around their legs. What are you doing here? I stammered, my heart sinking. We couldn't let you be all alone on your vacation, Mom chirped, so we decided to join you. We're right next door. I noticed their suitcases outside one of the nice rooms. Of course, they'd splurged on themselves while I was in the budget option. Before I could process what was happening, Kate was pushing the twins towards me. The boys have been dying to see the ocean. You don't mind watching them for a bit, do you? I want to take a walk on the beach. And I need to run to the store, Mom added. We'll be back soon. Just like that, they were gone, leaving me standing there with two overexcited three-year-olds tugging at my hands. What followed was the worst vacation of my life. The twins were out of control, tearing around my small room like tornadoes. They ripped the curtains, broke glasses, and somehow managed to clog the toilet with apples. I had to shell out money I didn't have for repairs and to call a plumber. By the end of the weekend, I was more exhausted than I'd ever been. The final straw came when Kate had the audacity to complain about how tired she was from all the traveling. I lost it. The argument that followed was epic. I yelled, Mom cried, Kate sulked, and the twins screamed through it all. I packed my bags that night and caught the first bus home in the morning. As I watched the coastline disappear behind me, I felt something shift inside. This couldn't go on. Something had to change. I dragged myself through the front door, exhaustion weighing heavily on my shoulders. Dad was in his usual spot, eyes glued to the TV. He barely grunted a hello as I passed. I crashed into bed that night, my mind a whirlwind of emotions and half-formed plans. When morning came, I knew what I had to do. I was halfway through packing my suitcase when I heard the front door slam. Elizabeth, where are you? Mom's voice rang out, sharp and irritated. She appeared in my doorway, face flushed with anger. I can't believe you just left us there. Do you have any idea how difficult it was to manage the twins on our own? I bit back a retort about how I manage the twins on my own all the time. Instead, I just kept packing. Mom's eyes narrowed as she took in the scene. What are you doing? I'm leaving, I said, my voice steadier than I felt. I'm moving out. I need my own life. Their reactions were immediate and predictable. How can you be so selfish? Mom cried. After everything we've done for you. Dad's face turned red. You ungrateful girl. Have you thought about your sister? Who's going to help her with the twins? I felt something snap inside me. My sister, what about me? What has anyone in this family ever thought about what I need? Elizabeth, 
Mom gasped. No, I'm serious. I pressed on. Kate has a husband. Let him help with the kids. I need to focus on my own life. You listen here, young lady, Dad growled. If you walk out that door, don't expect us to keep paying for your college. You'll be on your own. I looked at them both, these people who were supposed to love and support me unconditionally. In that moment, I realized they were strangers to me. Fine, I said, zipping up my suitcase. I'd rather be on my own than live like this. No personal life, no time for myself, just constant demands and screaming kids. I'm done. I pushed past them, dragging my suitcase down the stairs. They followed, still shouting, but I tuned them out. As I reached for the door handle, Mom made one last attempt. If you leave now, don't bother coming back. I paused, my hand on the doorknob. Then, without looking back, I opened the door and stepped out into the unknown. The next few weeks were a blur. I crashed on a classmate's couch while scrambling to find a more permanent solution. Eventually, I connected with a girl from my study group who was also looking for a roommate. We found a tiny apartment that we could just barely afford between the two of us. With my parents cutting me off financially, I had to pick up more shifts at the diner. I was working almost full-time on top of my classes. There were nights I thought I wouldn't make it, when the exhaustion was so deep I could barely think straight. But you know what? For the first time in my life, I felt free. No one was making demands on my time. No one was guilting me into babysitting or putting their needs before my own. The apartment was small. My bed was a mattress on the floor, but it was mine. I threw myself into my studies with a determination I didn't know I possessed. Every all-nighter, every missed social event, every extra shift, it was all working toward my goal, my future. Before I knew it, two years had passed. As I sat in the auditorium on graduation day, waiting for my name to be called, I scammed the crowd. A small part of me hoped to see a familiar face, mom, dad, even Kate, but the seats I'd reserved remained empty. Life after college was like stepping into a whole new world. I landed a job at a marketing firm, and suddenly I had a steady income. For the first time in years, I could breathe easy. I rented my own apartment. Nothing fancy, but it was all mine. No roommates, no family drama, just peace and quiet. And let me tell you, it was glorious. I started doing all those normal things I'd missed out on before. I went on dates, made new friends, and even had a couple of short relationships. Nothing serious, but it was fun to just be young and carefree for once. My parents were still in the picture, but barely. We talked maybe once a month, stilted conversations full of awkward silences, and thinly veiled disapproval. They were still sore about me moving out, and I wasn't exactly rushing to mend fences. Then came my 25th birthday. I had plans with friends, nothing wild, just dinner and drinks. But a week before, I got a call from Mom. Elizabeth, she said, her voice oddly cheerful, we want you to come over for your birthday. The whole family will be there. Against my better judgment, I agreed. When I arrived at my parents' house, it was like stepping back in time. Kate and her husband were there, the twins, now seven years old, running around like little tornadoes. Various aunts, uncles, and cousins were all smiles and hugs. Happy birthday, Lizzie. They choreased as I walked in. I plastered on a smile, accepting hugs and well wishes. Then came the gifts. Most were typical, clothes, books, gift cards. But then mom handed me an envelope with a flourish. This is from all of us, she said, beaming. I opened it, my stomach sinking as I saw what was inside. A ticket to a beach resort. We're all going, Dad announced proudly. A big family vacation. We've paid for everything. I froze. 
a family vacation with the twins. It was my ruined beach trip all over again. I opened my mouth to refuse, but Mom squeezed my arm, whispering harshly, Don't you dare make a scene, not in front of everyone. So I smiled and thanked them, all the while screaming internally. The party wound down, relatives trickled out, and finally it was just us. Me, Mom, Dad, Kate, and her family. That's when I let loose. I'm not going, I said flatly. What? Kate gasped. But it's a family trip. Exactly, I replied. And I'm not interested in spending my vacation babysitting your kids again. Kate burst into tears. You don't love us at all, do you? You don't care about your nephews. I care about them just fine, I snapped. But if I wanted kids, I'd have my own. The argument went round and round. Mom called me ungrateful. Dad looked disappointed. Kate kept crying. They all tried to guilt me, to pressure me into giving in. Fine, I said finally, my voice tired. I'll go. They all looked relieved, like they'd won some great victory, but they had no idea what was coming. The day of departure arrived, and I found myself at the airport, surrounded by my overly cheerful family. Kate and her husband were practically bouncing with excitement, already making plans for all the alone time they'd have while I watched the twins. You'll have so much fun with Aunt Lizzie, Kate told the boys, waking at me. She'll take you to the beach, build sandcastles, maybe even go snorkeling. Mom and Dad were beaming too, going on about how nice it would be for Kate to have a break. Not once did anyone ask what I wanted to do on this vacation. It was clear they all saw me as nothing more than a convenient babysitter. As we approached the check-in counter, I made my move. Oh, I exclaimed, feigning discomfort, I need to use the restroom. You guys go ahead and check in. I'll meet you at the gate. They nodded, distracted by wrangling luggage and excited children. I watched them join the queue, then turned and walked briskly in the opposite direction. My heart was pounding as I approached a different check-in counter. I handed over my passport and the ticket I'd bought weeks ago, a flight to a small, peaceful island resort. Once through security, I found a quiet corner and pulled out my phone. My hand shook slightly as I typed out a message to Mom. I'm not coming with you. I'm going on my own vacation. Enjoy your trip. I hit send and immediately turned off my phone, not wanting to deal with the fallout just yet. I could almost hear the explosion of anger and disbelief that would be happening at the other check-in counter. As I settled into my seat on the plane, I turned my phone back on briefly. It immediately exploded with notifications, missed calls, voicemails, angry texts. I listened to one voicemail from mom, her voice shrill and furious. Elizabeth Morgan, how dare you abandon your family like this? You've ruined everything. Your sister is in tears. Her husband is furious. They were counting on you to watch the boys, and I had plans. You are the most selfish, ungrateful. As the plane took off, I sipped my champagne and gazed out the window. The guilt was still there, a small knot in my stomach. I knew I'd have to deal with the fallout eventually. There would be angry phone calls, tearful accusations, probably another round of being called selfish and ungrateful. But overwhelmingly, I felt free, light, like I could finally breathe. For the first time in as long as I could remember, I was going on a trip that was just for me, no obligations, no babysitting, no family drama, just me, the beach, and whatever I decided I wanted to do. As the plane touched down on the small tropical island, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. The warm breeze that greeted me as I stepped off the plane seemed to whisper, welcome to freedom. I checked into my resort, a modest but charming place right on the beach. As I unpacked, curiosity got the better of me, and I turned on my phone. Instantly, it exploded with notifications, hundreds of text messages, 
missed calls, and voicemails flooded in. With a mix of amusement and trepidation, I scrolled through some of the messages. How could you do this to us, Mom? You ruined everything. Kate, you're so selfish, Elizabeth. I couldn't resist grinning. I had, for once, put my needs before of theirs. I threw the phone in the hotel safe and switched it off once more. During the next week, I was unavailable, and that was quite the week. I went snorkeling, read novels for hours on end, relaxed on the beach, and even gave surfing a try. With no schedule, no obligations, and no yelling children, I talked to other tourists, went on a few casual dates, and remained out as late as I wanted. Only the beat of the waves and me. Too quickly, it was time to go home. I felt more relaxed, tanned, and in control than I have in years when I got back to my apartment. But my newfound tranquility was about to be disrupted by the outside world. My door was pounded on the very following day. When I opened it, I saw Mom and Kate, their faces flushed with rage. You dare? Mom screamed and rushed in without warning. Are you even aware of what you did? Kate followed closely following. Our whole trip was destroyed by you. The boys were inconsolable. Their voices overlapping as they flung insults and accusations. They went on a rant. I was a bad sister and daughter who was ungrateful and self-centered. I owed them for both the childcare I had neglected to provide and the ticket they had purchased for my vacation. For a few minutes, I let them to vent, and their comments passed over me without making any impression. Then I spoke, strongly yet quietly. That's enough, I exclaimed, breaking through their commotion with my voice. I owe you nothing at all, including money, daycare, and my time. I get to make my own decisions now that I'm an adult. I held out a hand as Mom opened her lips to argue. I won't be talking about this anymore. Leave now, please. We can chat when you're prepared to show me respect and have a civil discussion. I believe it would be better if we didn't talk till then. They were stunned into silence as they gazed at me. They then hurried out after using a few more foul remarks. I exhaled deeply when the door banged behind them. It seemed right, but it wasn't simple. I changed a lot during the following two weeks. I relocated without informing my family of my new address after finding a new apartment in a distant area of town. I immersed myself in my profession and took up other interests, such as yoga, painting, and even learning a new language. It wasn't always simple. There were days of shame and periods of uncertainty. However, I knew I had made the correct decision each time I returned home to my quiet apartment, made plans without thinking about childcare responsibilities, or followed a new hobby just because I felt like it. I have no idea what the future will bring. Perhaps my family and I will manage to have a positive connection in the future. Perhaps not. But I do know that I will stand tall and unrepentant in the life I have chosen for myself facing whatever comes my way.